Okay. Good evening, everyone. We will um, begin our meeting this evening. Um, thank you all for coming. I just want to let people know we're in the gallery uh, that we do record these meetings. So um, you may be captured by the uh, video equipment and uh, also that we don't really like to have people heckling or doing things like that. So if you um, do find yourself feeling like the need to say something out loud, you will be encouraged to leave the room. Um, uh, but other than that, we are very, very, very happy to have so many in the gallery this evening. And we'll begin our meeting uh, with our pledge. And if the elected members would like to stand and join with me in that. We recognise the city's considerable natural and cultural heritage, including thousands of years of traditional ownership by Ghana and the more recent contribution from people either born here or who have migrated here. As we meet together, we build on this heritage by respecting and listening to each other, thinking clearly, being receptive to new ideas, speaking honestly and deciding wisely for the current and future well-being of those we serve. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we do have uh, an apology this evening uh, from um, Councillor Wilkes, and we'll um, just add that. I think actually we're going the other way. Sorry. Um, and uh, just a confirmation of the minutes. Do I have someone to move the minutes? Thank you, Councillor Femi Lotus. Well, what happened there? Do you want to just try that again? I just went again. straight to red. Yours all went red. As written. The second. Sorry, I need to turn that on. So for the recording, uh, leave of absence. Councillor Femi Lotus. Yes, happy to move as written. Thank you very much. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Bell. Yes, happy to second. Thank you. Uh, any questions? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Uh, the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, carried unanimously, I think we'll say for that one. Um, next, we have the uh, Mayor's report. Do I have a mover? Councillor Eaton. Yes, that's written. Nothing to say. Thank you. Councillor Bell? Happy to second. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, we have uh, no presentations this evening, but we do have some deputations. Uh, so I'd really like to invite Christine Greaves, who is um, going to be our first deputation this evening. Uh, Christine's making her way up here. She's speaking on behalf of um, business, the coffee trough. And Christine, just to let you know, you've got eight uninterrupted minutes. We won't interrupt you and um, you can use that time however you wish. And are you willing to take questions at the end from elected members? Okay, your time starts now. Off you go. Good evening, I'm going to read. Good evening, Mayor and Councillors. Thank you for the opportunity to present my deputation. My name is Christine Green in the city of Onkaparinga for over 11 years. I'm a self employed single mother with four children attending Cardine College. I'm the proud owner of a mobile coffee business called The Coffee Trough, which I've operated in the Seaford area since November, 2019. Now, sorry, is this my slide thing? Clearly I've used PowerPoint before. The first location in which the business operated from was 266 Esplanade, Seaford, opposite the Trough car park, hence the name. We operated off the driveway during summer, then COVID lockdown through to November, 2020, when we sadly had to move house. I relocated to the trough of car park and operated from there, rain, hail or shine, for the next two and a half years, becoming a local household name according to many of my regulars. In May 2023, I moved to 63 Tiller Drive, five doors down from the trough car park. I continued to operate from the car park until its closure in June. As the local residents knew to find me in that vicinity, I thought it an appropriate move to open my van from the driveway like I did at 266 Esplanade for the interim of the closure. When the car park reopened, it had decreased from over 70 parks to 29. It is evident that the reduction in size has significantly impacted the flow of traffic at the top of Tiller Drive, as you will see in the photo taken after my closure. 
If this issue was just about my business having to move back to the trough car park, then so be it. I'm used to taking good doses of toughen up princess and getting on with the job at hand. But I am here because many local residents have expressed a strong sense of loss of community and connection from the closure of their little safe space at 63 Tiller Drive. As you will have read in the comments in the tabled petition, there are numerous stories from people of all walks and stages of life. Homeschooling parents teaching their special needs children life skills like ordering and paying, support workers who brought their NDIS clients as they felt welcome and safe, the disabled who made it a part of their weekly routine to pop by for a chat, and the elderly who enjoyed the sheltered seating area in winter and summer as it was a manageable walk from their homes. The men's mental health support group, The Next Step Australia, felt at home gathering with the boys for coffee and vibrant, constructive and open conversation. Dog walkers, families with kids, the retired and the lonely all formed lovely friendships that they otherwise wouldn't have if not for the little garden space they had met in. These are the reasons why my petition had over 900 signatures in a matter of a, of a few weeks. Since the closure, I've been operating again from the trough car park and the significantly reduced size is proving to raise concerns for the gathering of community. The trough is a popular destination for several reasons. These photos show us are a small snippet to show that the permit location is no longer ideal for several reasons. There's a lineup of customers, prams, kids, dogs, runners, walkers, dog walkers, bikes, and surfers with boards all navigating the footpath and little space in front of my van. If I could have put videos in my presentation, then I would have. There is nowhere for kids to safely run around and play while parents wait in line. My van and car also take up valuable surf turf and the car park fills up quick and overflows down Tiller Drive. So to the point of my deputation, I would like to propose to council that the mobile vendor permit location be moved from the car park to the grassed area by the gazebo on the other side of the trough steps. I believe some minor development of what council has already provided would make an ideal gathering place and vendor permit location. Appropriate shelter, additional picnic tables and a basic play space would make this destination a real draw card in the south. In the future, if council deemed appropriate, a toilet block could be added to service the growing community of residents and visitors to the area. First, the gravel driveway for the permit location. Currently with the size and setup of the car park, I am forced to drive in the wrong way so that I can serve facing the footpath. Then I must exit out the wrong way as there's no room for a U-turn, which as you can imagine, creates a problem in and of itself. A dedicated mobile vendor driveway adjacent to the grassed area would fix this issue along with freeing up parking spaces and therefore congestion on Tiller Drive. Secondly, shelter. The trough gazebo offers no shelter from sun or rain and therefore does not meet community requirements as expressed by many residents, particularly the elderly. I rarely observe anyone actually using it. Solid roofing would be a game changer. Three, picnic tables and play equipment. This need is obvious and is key to the gathering of community. Children can safely engage in exercise and outdoor play while adults engage with their community. Families and friends can have somewhere to enjoy either their coffee, pizza or home brought picnic. Basic play equipment, a nature play space or even exercise equipment would be a great asset to the area. For the toilet block. The local toilet blocks are too far away to service the need of the trough community, particularly the elderly and young children who generally need to go at the most inopportune time, like standing in a queue. There is a little extra grass area to the north that would fit one nicely. All of the above would add to the value of the uh, to the area for the growing Onkapringa population and visiting tourists. For what it's worth, Chris Picton has also expressed his support of this idea. I understand that money is often where the rubber hits the road, so I've approached a few people in an attempt to reduce costing and maximise community engagement. The following have offered assistance. Mr Steve Byrne, Principal of Cardine College, have has offered that Marcel and Technical College provide the construction of picnic tables, which they've previously and potentially an additional pergola, which would work nicely next to the mobile vendor site to shelter people while they wait. Mr. Byrne has suggested incorporating the builds as part of the 2025 curriculum under the project work standards and supervision of Onkapringa Council. He has also expressed possible sponsorship of some of the project.
Scott Reynolds, owner of Natural Style Building Co, which specialises in nature play spaces, outdoor timber furniture, pergolas and construction, has kindly offered to donate their supplies and services towards the project. Luke Appetis, the owner of Wooden Logs, Seaford, has kindly offered to donate sand and gravel for the mobile vendor driveway. Bunning Seaford have also kindly offered to donate timber and materials towards the project. As a joint community effort, I am certain we have the resources to make this happen. I'm encouraged by the City of Onkaparinga's Community Plan 2030, specifically your vision of strong, vibrant communities and supporting our communities to connect with the spaces and places they enjoy. I believe this proposal is in line with your vision and the results you hope to achieve. I quote, our people are connected, engaged and resilient. Our people are active and healthy. Our city is green and inviting. Our city is a great place to live. Our communities trust council to deliver. Our ratepayers receive strong returns for their rates. In closing, this photo was taken on the grassed area after I gave people only a few hours notice to come down for a photo. Many saw my post after the fact and indicated that they would have been there had they known. I think it's a pretty encouraging sign that we are on the right track. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thanks, Christine. Um, I would open it up for any questions that we might have. Anyone got any questions? <laughs> Councillor Jew. Um, thank you for your deputation. That was a really good snapshot of what you've been doing. Um, two questions. What exactly would you like from Council um, in relation to your proposal? I guess uh, permission to develop the land. I understand that council has, um, you know, guidelines and, and things that they're strictly adhere to. So, um, yeah, I guess I really need to work with people, um, yeah, and, and the people that have offered their assistance um, to create a space for them. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, beyond your business, how do you think it would benefit the broader community? My business is interesting. I'm just really lucky. I think I'm in the right place at the right time. And so I'm kind of, I, I absolutely believe that it benefits them. Just for what I got to witness um, when I was open at Tiller Drive was absolutely just beautiful and incredible. Just seeing people, you know, complete strangers meet. You've got little kids talking with the retired and, you know, like a whole lack of, you know, conversations going on that otherwise wouldn't have happened. And so I guess as an overflow of that or a carry on of that, I would love to see, yeah, a space created just, you know, for people to sit down because at the moment, as you saw in uh, one of the last photos, people sit in the shade of my coffee van and, you know, and it's it's not appropriate really, you know, as a gathering space, you've got, you know, often um, I didn't get to show any footage of it, but often there'll be a lineup, you know, kind of, you know, five to 10 deep of, you know, people lined up to wait and it's just absolute chaos and then people they they can't hang around and chat um afterwards because they've got they're chasing this child or this dog barking at their dog or whatever it is and so being able to create an open space where they can actually sit and you know just hang out and, and do I guess what they used to do um, would be amazing. Thank you. There's no further questions. Thank you so much for your time tonight and coming in. Uh, I'd then like to invite uh, Monica Moore and Leanne Johansson from St John the Apostles um, Parish School to come and join us from Christie's. And as they're making their way down, um, they're going to be talking tonight about the proposed road closure and disposal of a walkway at Christie's Beach, which uh, that's their area. And as I said, you've got eight minutes, it's all yours, and we're happy to answer questions from elected members. Fantastic, off you go. Good evening, um, Mayor, elected members and staff. Thank you for this opportunity to present um, this evening. We are here to address the item of the proposed clo road closure and disposal of walkway at Christie's Beach, Winner of Road. We will look to discuss the following apprehensions in relation to the Gladeway closure. Why does the laneway need to be closed? What are the benefits for, to the school and school community in the laneway were to be closed? Current use of the existing properties acquired by the school, concerns with movement between the sites and across the existing laneway and providing alternative entry points, exit points, egress from and to the school ground. Ultimately, the school is looking... Just do that, sorry. 
Ultimately, the school is looking to acquire the existing laneway that runs north-south from Widderer Road to, Car to Carmichael Road, as this will allow for the school to expand and flow freely between the current school site and the neighbouring acquired properties. The acquisition of the laneway will assist the school with providing additional developments and play spaces, which while being sympathetic to the surroundings and locations of the school. The school provided a handout that gave the community a quick snapshot of the positive outcomes of the closure of the laneway. The flyer was also provided to the surrounding neighbours as a letter drop. The site contact slide. Um, therefore, the proposed laneway is to be closed. It's situated on the eastern side of St. John the Apostle School and runs north-south between Winnera Road and Carmichael Road. The school over the years have acquired the adjoining properties to the east of the laneway, thus being 18 Winnera Road and 11 and 13 Carmichael Road. 18 Winnera Road has been used by the school for some time, being their OSH and library facility, while the two houses facing Carmichael Road have been temporarily rented out as residential properties. As the campus is surrounded by streets, it is otherwise landlocked. The campus has one oval and one hard surface court, which both require play spaces. Therefore, there is nowhere available for the campus to grow other than to the east, the two sites on Carmichael Road and Winnera Road. And the two one on Carmichael are intended to enable the physical expansion of the school to better accommodate the existing student cohort. With the closure of the laneway, it does present both some positive and negative outcomes. However, the positive outcomes do outweigh the negatives with, mi with minimal impact to the general community. One of the important positives is that by closing the laneway, this alleviates students traveling between school buildings, which ultimately is much safer for both students and staff. The school site also becomes a cohesive campus and it's all properties are connected and students, staff, parents and caregivers can easily flow into and across the school, school site. One of the concerns from the community was that by closing the walkway, it prevented the community accessing the walking trails around the suburb. So therefore, St John the Apostle School understands this community reaction to the laneway closure and undertook a pattern of pedestrian walkways distributed throughout the local area. This walkway is located within a smaller suburban block and is surrounded by a good road network. So its closure has minimal impact on the permeability of the area. The local pattern of development is created by relatively consistent size suburban blocks. Most blocks are between 130 metres to 240 metres long, with some as long as 340 metres. Some, some are shorter than average, between 80 and 110 metres long. The two blocks adjacent to the walkway are short blocks and approximately 100 metres and 110 metres long. So therefore, if the walkway is closed, the block would be approximately only 210 metres long. The subsequent block would therefore be a similar length to most of the surrounding blocks and well within the average range of the surrounding pattern of development, causing minimal impact on access and permeability. The usage of the laneway is mainly at drop-off and pick-up times, in which students, staff, school parents and caregivers use the laneway. It is a barren laneway with high solid fences either side, which provides little passive surveillance and provides some public safety concerns as well. In terms of distances travelled due to the good road network, there is a limited number of dwellings that are impacted by the proposal to close the walkway. Any pedestrians coming from the surrounding blocks have a choice of surrounding streets to travel, which makes very little change to the overall distance travelled. The school community uses the walkway at drop-off and pick-up times, which includes students, staff, school parents and caregivers. There is also controlled and supervised use by class groups across the walkway to use the school facilities in 18 Winnera Road. If the work walkway is closed, additional gates to the school campus will be created, especially on Carbicle Road. Use of the walkway by the school and its broader community can easily be replaced by comprehensive circulation throughout the entire school grounds if the walkway is closed. Students would have free and easy circulation between school facilities without the need for controlled access. 
Parents can use the school site to travel between Winner Road and Carmichael Road as required for parking and drop off and pick up. Furthermore, the school would see to develop the laneway into play space and access spaces and therefore conditions on the existing laneway. The laneway would also assist with overcoming the slope of the site. The school would provide new access points and therefore spread drop off and pick up locations, which in turn would positively assist the traffic congestions at the 15 minutes per day the obstructions are at their peak. In conclusion, the closure of the laneway at Winnero Road provides additional safety for students and staff traversing between the sites. It also provides the school community with ease of movement between Winnero Road and Carmichael Road, with minimal disruption to the overall community due to the block siding of the current suburban block. Therefore, we hope to have council support in the opportunity to close and dispose of the laneway in which would assist the school in providing a safer and connected school for the school community while providing no major alternatives to travels routes for the general pub public. Thank you for your time and attention. Thanks very much. I'll just see if there are any questions. Councillor Fisher. Barry, thank you, first of all, for the presentation. Very comprehensive. I noticed that you used uh, some consultation process with closing of the lane. Have you recorded any of the responses that you got from those neighbours? I mean, you talked about alternative walkways and areas and and um, that side of it, but did you actually get the negatives as well as the positives from the people uh, in particular, probably directly opposite that might use it, things like that? Um, so, yeah, I think the um, responses are reported by the council through the consultation. We have okay. So you haven't seen those? No, I've only read what we And we have? Yes. Right. So, um, Councillor Fisher, some of that is recorded in item 9.6. Yes. Okay. And my final question then is uh, you talked about community safety concerns in relation to the existence of the laneway. Have you sought any advice on that or any statistics or anything else that identify that that is an area of concern? So we use, um, we use ACING uh, Winner Road as yeah. our library. Mm -hmm. um, so the students are going to access that, that can become an excursion. Yeah. Um, in terms of safety and actually needing to find a separate site. Yeah. Uh, that's where some of the safety considerations um, they come in as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Platten. Thank you so much, and thank you for your presentation. Um, did you uh, ask the school community uh, about the lane closure and advertise or ask them to participate in the USA public consultation? No, we didn't. So I think um, that's where then we provided some information. I think we, we tried not to be biased about any of that, and um, so I think some of the feedback. I'm going to read some of the responses, parents. Um, you know, you didn't realise that the closing of the laneway would actually is actually for the benefit, benefit, benefit of their students, mm. um, their children. So. Yeah. Um. And how many students currently go to the school? Excellent. And um, speaking, I guess, hypothetic, not hypothetically. No, not um, hypothetically. Would you consider the school community to be in favour of the lane purchase? Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you for your deputation. It was very informative. Um, just um, one question, I think, could be two. Um, what extra car parks do you, how many extra car parks do you envisage it may assist with? At the moment of the car park situation, we've, we've got a car park on site. This utilising the litter of road property and having that traverse between the two properties, it opens up a, a potential of an additional um, car parking in that property um, for, for the future developments. So even with any other future developments, we will look to assist them with review the car parking to on site as well. Okay. Um, one other question. Um, um, is is there uh, currently um, uh, what are the what are the if you just sorry bear with me if you could uh, revise again just um, very briefly what are the issues that you currently have with the areas separated? Um, so the 
Please. We tutor around about say for his students. Um, so being able to um, open up and utilize the laneway and have access between between all the sites that students can move freely. Um, we have some additional staff going to his students to access the library, for example, to able then to develop um come on the street. Um, to be um, be problematic in terms of staffing first day emergency those sorts of things. We have to have a separate pool of staff there in the event that there was an emergency evacuation. Um, you know, um, um, yeah, theft or you know those sorts of things as well. So, so, um, for the sake of safety and for learning, she had access to offer first day would be problematic. Children that are anaphylactic, they have separate first aid equipment on one site and they're needing to bring it over to the um, to the front office and they might need it at, at play times. Um, Okay, thank you. One more question from sure. what you said. Um, you mentioned theft. Is there a real big issue at the moment with that laneway being there with theft at the school, for example? Uh, is there currently a very, what to, what sort of fencing do you have? We do have um, along those laneways, um, there, is, um, there is fencing along there. Um, I, I, I can comment if, you know, if, if that's any theft or any issue with of people going into the ground to be a result of that or not. We do, we are fenced all the way around, um, which has, um, I think, over the years, um, what is the like, yeah. I think just with that main way, there's only one um, uh, light yeah. right in the, in the middle. So it is quite dark in the areas of that, and um, obviously the power, we've, we've obviously gone through the authorities as well. So there is um, a potential easement, but that power source is going direct to the school. So we would look to review that and potentially take that off and then obviously open up that site for the school and have um, more of a safety uh, area of lighting of that for the school ground. Thank you. No more questions. Thank you. Any more questions? No, thank you very much. So we're moving to um, the um, next part of our meeting, which uh, for those of you who are following along, it's uh, section nine, which is all our reports. And our first, uh, that starts on page 23, um, if you're reading the papers. And uh, we have um, our friends from the Department of Environment and Water who are joining us this evening. Um, I do need to, uh, as they're getting ready, just to remind people that uh, some of our elected members, we did have a request from um, Jeff Hayter um, to be a deputation today. However, we received that um, after the close of um, the appropriate time for uh, non deputations to be accepted. So I'm just letting everyone know about that. Okay, are we ready? All right. So this is the um, item around developments and advocacy at the Aldinga Washpool, and we've got uh, our visitors here tonight, and they can perhaps introduce themselves. Um, we've got Rachel and Tim and Tony. Thank you. Off you thanks go. Thanks so much, and thanks for having me on your agenda tonight. Um, so my name is Rachel Hitzner, and I'll be leading the management planning um, process within the department for the Aldinga Conservation Park. Um, I work in a team um, with him, um, Rumbelo. So he's the team leader um, that focuses on management plans um, and policies associated um, with national parks and protected areas. And Tony Marvell's here as the uh, manager of National Parks and Wildlife at Lake Mount Lofty. So, yeah, my role is to basically develop the park management plan. Um, I'm working with the Ghana Parks Advisory Committee as my key partner. So they're the authorised Ghana um, body under the Ghana co-management um, agreement. So the members for the Ghana Parks Advisory Committee have been appointed by the Ghana Yurta um, Aboriginal Corporation. And one of their key objectives is delivering um, this management plan. So as you would all be very much aware, there we are definitely not starting from scratch here and there's been um, a huge amount of work that's already been invested and done, whether it's from an advocacy or a planning, um, on-site, on-ground perspective. So all of that information um, is going to be going ahead and um, will be informing the development of the planning process. Um, so I've only got 10 minutes tonight, so I'm gonna run through this quite quickly. Um, just talk a little bit about park management plans, outlining why and how we do them. Um, just talking about some of the key milestones um, for developing the Aldinga Conservation Park Management Plan. 
um, touch through some of the stakeholder feedback that I thought members would be quite interested um, in hearing about that we have today and just the immediate steps going forward um, that we have in the planning process. So just to start with um, park management plans. So the management plan um, is really the most important source of clear management direction for a reserve and is accepted um, really internationally as a prerequisite for um, best practice in park management planning. So the management plans play a key role in positioning the government as a capable uh, land manager. It's also a partnering document with traditional owners, in this case with the Garda Parks Advisory Committee, and really establishing transparency and accountability and aligning the government's um, aspirations with those of the community and start to bring in um, the community and so they understand the park narrative that we're working towards. Um, so the Department for Environment um, and Water is the key agency um, under, sorry, I didn't move that slide across, under the National Parks and Wildlife Act, um, who develops up the park management plan. So the management plans in themselves are very strategic documents and they're providing the long-term um, vision of the park. And they're done um, in consideration of current trends, um, constraints and future trends, um, also looking at anticipated changes of ecological, cultural, social, um, and even political priorities. Um, these are outlined as management objectives in the plan and they provide the statutory basis for the management of the parks. Now, these plans can be amended um, or the minister can um, also prepare a new plan of management. Um, they don't describe the operational detail of the parks. Um, previously, they were designed this way um, and they were found they were becoming too prescriptive and inflexible. Um, really limiting the department's ability to adapt to changes um, and priorities and emerging issues. Um, so these are very um, strategic documents. Why else we need the management plans? Really to ensure the key values and assets are considered and protected. We use a values-based framework um, to develop up our plans of management rather than the more, um, I suppose, traditional approach, which looks um, particularly on managing threats. Um, and issues. So it broadly outlines how the parks will be managed and what is appropriate. Um, this can be um, outlined in the form of zoning of parks, given it's a conservation plan. Um, you know, the majority of the park is going to be zoned um, for conservation use. Um, and obviously working with the Ghana Parks Advisory Committee, we're also working through with them where they might see there could be some cultural protection zones as well. So that will be an ongoing discussion that we'll be having um, with First Nations um, people. So as I said before, they guide the development of operational plans which set the priorities into the day-to-day -day, um, management of the park. Um, so just very quickly, how management plans are developed um, in the initiation stage. We're obviously engaging with key partners and stakeholders, informing them around the process um, and asking them what they believe um, part values are, threats, challenges and opportunities. Um, also reviewing all of the internal um, documents, whether that's um, in the form of past plans or scientific information. There's been cultural assessments, um, heritage assessments, native veg assessments, um, undertaking external key stakeholder consultation. Um, so in uh, the Aldinga process, we've met with external stakeholders, obviously it's, um, such as yourselves, um, with co the Washpool Coalition Group, Friends Groups, um, and obviously other prescribed bodies that are outlined in the Act. Um, all of this goes to inform the development of the management plan. We have internal stakeholder reviews, so utilising some of the specialists in the agencies to inform um, fire management, um, biodiversity, conservation, tourism. Uh, the approval to release the park management plan is by um, our Director of National Parks and Wildlife. Um, the plan goes out for a statutory three-month public consultation period, and we use the Your Say platform, collect feedback through surveys, um, 
also run um, public meetings, community drop-in sessions, depending on what's required for that particular park. Um, we then analyse all of the submissions and that report for transparency is also placed on the Your Say website. Um, and this and the updated plan goes to the Parks and Wilderness Council before it's adopted by the Minister. That's a very quick overview, um, really just of the park management planning process. Um, so in terms of the key milestones, um, we're looking at for the Aldinga Conservation Park Management Plan, um, five sort of separate stages um, going across the top. We've really just finished stage one, which is all around the pre-planning, engagement with stakeholders, um, information sessions, reviewing um, plans, reports, um, and starting to develop half a draft plan in collaboration with the Ghana Parks Advisory Committee. In terms of um, stakeholder feedback, um, so this is just an outline of some of the themes that were um, um, coming through a lot of the consultation work that we have done. Um, so first and foremost, honouring and advancing Ghana cultural and spiritual connection to country, and the intent um, behind this management theme um, that will start to provide the, I suppose, the architecture um, of the management plan is um, really capturing how uh, Ghana people maintain a strong cultural connection to their traditional lands and looking at what opportunities um, there may be um, to support Ghana cultural, um, traditional economic and social outcomes through park-based activities. Um, also looking at how we can promote um, and interpret Ghana culture and heritage, um, not only to help strengthen Ghana identity, but also um, to provide visitors a deeper appreciation of, um, of the site. Uh, the second um, th strong theme that was coming through was obviously around protecting and enhancing natural and heritage values. And this is really focused on uh, maintaining a healthy ecosystem and improving the natural and ecological um, processes to ensure that the park can really sustain the range of habitats and important wildlife that are there. And also looking at how to um, encourage resilience to threats such as pests and climate change and obviously urban planning. Um, that's an important issue surrounding the park. The third theme, um, embracing the spirit of um, Ghana country. Um, and this is really an honour around how um, Ghana people welcome visitors to their country. And this theme of management is um, focused around visitor access and inclusion and recreational opportunities and how they can actually be done in a culturally um, sensitive manner. Um, so how can we manage the park to maintain the current um, experiences, how can we adapt to um, increased demand and how can we increase the diversity um, of experiences and the utilisation of the park um, for education purposes was one of the key themes that was coming in um, that we were hearing that would be like to be used um, for future use. And the last one um, is around working together for shared outcomes and this is um, really the intent behind this is about recognising the shared interests in this park and, and how we can work together. Um, so in terms of immediate steps going forward, um, we've got a commitment over the next um, month to work closely with the Ghana Parks Advisory Committee and, and we're gonna be focusing on two key things. Um, the first is really identifying um, the key challenges and opportunities um, the park presents in consideration of how they align with the cultural, spiritual and traditional uses of the park by Ghana people and start to look at how we can investigate um, how to imbalance the cultural heritage significance of the park with visitor access and inclusion and services. So that's our next focus over the next month or two. Um, yeah, so thank you. I, I think I've run out of my 10 minutes time. So. Um, the three of us are happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, do you want to take questions or officers happy to do that? All right, Councillor Drew. Thank you for the presentation. Um, got a few questions. Um, I just wanted to begin with what the significance of the scrub and wash pool is and why it um, was given national park status. Sorry, what do you mean? Um, why it was given national park status. 
the um, soda scrub and the, so what became a conservation park? Yep, um, there's a lot of reasons. I think there, there was a lot of community advocacy that um, was really pushing for the values of the site to be protected. Um, the existing watchful site, there's some there's existing native vegetation, there's lots of cultural heritage at the site, which is really important to protect. And there's uh, a number of um, birds that use the site still. So it's an important part of um, I think it's also only one of the last remaining sort of freshwater mm. wetland sites along the you know, standard metropolitan coastline. So there's, an, there's cultural, there's environmental, and there's also social with the community values. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I just wondered um, about the Ghana Parks Advisory Committee and if there's any Southern um, people, um, Ghana people that are represented and if not, if there's opportunity for Southern Ghana also to have a have a say around the table, um, around the co-management? Yeah, sure. The way co-management works is uh, it's a, it's a, the co-management agreement between state government and um, CAI, uh, the Swap Body Corporate for Ghana, uh, and Ghana CAI Act, um, they're requested to um, uh, um, select um, members of their community to be on the, on the committee. Uh, so I think that's definitely um, uh, something for Kayak to, to, to work with us more closely on. Uh, but I definitely think that there's a willingness within Kayak to work with the broader Ghana community, um, sorry, KPAC, uh, through Kayak and the broader community to get that. Uh, site specific uh, cultural knowledge through KPAC into the planning process and knowledge of the park. Wonderful, thank you. Um, when is the plan due to drop? That's <laughs> I've written it. What time you work yeah, with? Like the, look, we like to say for the 18 months process to a plan. Sure. Co managed park plans take on because there's that cultural aspect. We must make sure. We, we get in a sensitive way, uh, culturally sensitive way, so they tend to be a, a, a bit longer. Um, so uh, we would hope from where we are now, um, you know, on, 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 on. <laughs> that, like, like I said, probably eight months for a normal plan, probably more like two years for a, a program. Okay. okay. Um... Is there funding currently attached, or do you have to do a cab sub to try and get money, or how? You know, you have the plan. Have the submission, and... just to explain what you mean by cab sub, because not everyone will know that. Yeah, do you have to go back to um, the government requesting additional funds or funds to enact the plan? Yeah, although I'm not totally aware of the, the cabinet budget separate to, to what we do as planners, sure. but um, through the code management process, we like to attach funding to it, so it supports the planning process and the and the governance process of the board. And um, I think the manager position there is an Aboriginal uh, government manager position that comes with the government funding for KPAC as well. So, um, so there is some um, definitely code management funding that comes through um, uh, with the process. Okay. I have two more questions. Um, the public I think the public bank is still sort of on the table to be considered as part of the plan. Yeah, the public bank's currently not in the planned area as part. Most of the public bank, my understanding, is fits within a road, existing road reserve. Mm -hmm. And um, the council staff asked us to have a look at that and consider it. Um, Late last year, so the department's having a look at the options to include that road reserve. Um, sure. But it's probably ongoing negotiations at the moment. But sure. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of roads, two more things. One is, um, is parking being considered um, within the planning, within the existing plans? Uh, we have within the management planning process. Yeah. Uh, we haven't got that far into the process. I think that but we probably must get further into the process and a bit more understanding of what that might look like. Understanding that Parkland Road is not in the park um, and where the parking might be. So mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Um, and 
perfect segue um, in relation to Button Road. I wondered if the plan or if um, Ju will actually provide any commentary around um, Button Road and whether or not it enables the plan that you have and the vision that the community has for the wash pool um, with or without the road. Will you provide commentary in relation to what you believe we could consider as part of our process? Um, there's no position on Button Road. In the at the moment, I think, like Rachel said, there's a big document, so I wouldn't commit to the plan giving uh, a direction one way or the other. I think the plan would investigate or support further investigations, and um, if it was deemed by stakeholders that it was something they wanted to do to live in the park, then, then that would be investigated and supported. But I don't think the plan at this early stage. Um, knowing the chances that start some consultation would would be either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And this is an estimate, so you did really, really well. Um, Councillor Bell. Your presentation that was very informative. Uh, just a question, it may not be relevant, but just with the Biodiversity Act that the government, the South Australian government, are considering to bring in, how do you think that will impact or change what you're doing? Uh, the, the biodiversity of the state government, mm. biodiversity act, they're going together. Uh, yeah, that's another section of the department that doesn't, mm -hmm. we don't get too involved with. Um, uh, I'm probably reluctant to make much comment on that at the moment um, because it's still, uh, it's only just recently gone through some public consultation and they'll be going through that information. That's not really no. my area to comment on, so yeah. thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Yeomans. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. Um, Councillor Drew's probably stolen a lot of my thunder, so there's, there's some double ups. And <laughs> like I apologise. So, um, in relation to the visitor access opportunities, just wondering whether you could tease that out a little bit, what you were sort of anticipating or um, thinking or what, what your vision is there. Yeah, uh, like I said, it's still quite early days, stage one still. Um, Recognising that there is there has been a lot of historic, sort of historical sort of access to the site. Um, um, so I think getting an understanding um, of the current uses, um, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of trails through there that have been probably not designed, have been uh, um, you know, just accessed over time. So I think there's um, uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of things to consider in that with the close proximity to the residential area and the existing uses and, and but also acknowledging the, the cultural and environmental values. So um, I think it's too early to probably tell. And the, the, the reason we uh, we talk the, the, the process structured the way it is is we talk, we pre-consulted with the key stakeholders and then we have that three month consultation and that really text what we've heard. So hopefully once we get a draft together the consultation process hopefully will direct us to whether we've got that balance. It'll be a balance between you know recreational opportunities and protection. Yeah. And, and thanks for that. There's also a lot of local community groups who are interested in, in that part of the world. So I assume that part of your plan you're talking to those relevant um groups and bringing them on board as part of that consultation and development. Yeah the pre-consultation definitely makes us already met them that some members are here tonight in some of the groups we've met with. Yeah. So already, and the I meeting mean, with them, kind of trying to keep them up to date with the process as it goes. So meeting some of those kids, take those groups, um, and seeing those community groups as part of that pre-consultation yeah. information gathering. And I oh, won't keep just, just one last thing, just, just, just clarify that the conservation part does spread either side of Button Road to the, to the, to the beach, to the Pebble Bank. Yep, so Button uh, Road's the other side. Other side. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there is a block on, on the southern side yep. as well. Yeah. 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 Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm just going to check if any um, elected members have questions of staff as well, any of our officers, just before we leave this item. Is there anything any of the officers want to add to the report? Councillor Yeomans. I was just going to ask one question of staff. I can on page. Go ahead. Sorry. Yep. On page uh, twenty-seven, there's a reference that uh, says DEW's preference there be no increase to the current flow rate or volume of stormwater runoff entering 
building a conservation park. So to, to that end, is there any strategies as to where the natural water might be looking to be diverted to? Um, through the mayor, uh, at this stage, really, I think it uh, be as as these guys are saying, still in the early stages about um, whether flows would be returned to pre-colonial levels and all of those kind of things that would have an impact on flows in the future. At the moment, um, really, it's about the stormwater management plan in the area and the protection of the area there. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Bell, um, I was happy to move the motion. Excellent. So I have a mover. Do we have a seconder? Oh, sorry, do you wish to speak to the motion? Um, just briefly, just okay, to say I think go. it's a very exciting um, piece of work. I just want to congratulate you for the, your advocacy and uh, the long-term works that you and council have done together with the community uh, and uh, the Ghana people um, of, the, of uh, the city of Onga Paringa. Um, yeah, I just um, look forward to further... Uh, contributions that are made to improve and preserve the area. Thank you. Uh, Councillor G. I'd like to second. Um, to move speak? it, please. Yeah, no, thank you. Second. Um, yeah. <laughs> any questions? Deb uh, Councillor Eaton, question or debate? Well, Councillor G, can you turn off your... Thank you. Councillor Eaton. Certainly, I'm very supportive of it. Um, I actually Thanks, witnessed Tim. your capacities with the implementation of Glenfor National Park because my son managed that process and the processes that the department follows are very rigorous and certainly has my full support. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Um, Councillor Bell, do you wish to close debate? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? Carried unanimously. So thank you very much for your time tonight. Really appreciate it. We're in a very happy mood this evening. Very good. We now have item 9.2, so page 33, Councillor Jew. Um, I sent through a speak in the motion um, as written. Um, I sent it through earlier for members. So is that what we can see in front of us? Can yeah, you just correct. read that and be confident sure. that's what you're moving? Um. Experiments we provided with workshops on. So, can we just change it to the hydrology and eco eco um, ecology? Hydrology um, and ecology. ecology. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you. A site visit with Ghana representation, discussing the location, has the Ghana Council formed a position on Button Road to assist the council. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, please. Off you go. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank staff for enacting the original motion and ensuring the traffic monitoring count gave a good snapshot of vehicle use by monitoring across May and then during peak in December and January. I'd also like to thank you for identifying three alternate options for beach access as requested by the Chamber. I acknowledge staff have suggested in the report that no further action um, is, could potentially be taken. Um, I appreciate that the Department of Environment and Water are undertaking the management plan. I feel that as the road, Button Road, continues to be in Council's jurisdiction, we have a responsibility to continue our work. Due to the significant environmental and cultural considerations of the Odinga Wash Pool, it's extremely important that we're collaborating and acting in our power to ensure the preservation and enhancement of this space. It is one of the last remaining coastal freshwater estuarine lagoon systems along the metropolitan coast. It might look like a swamp on occasions, but it's home throughout the year to endangered birds and migrating birds, as well as many diverse species. Would we approve a road to run through sand dunes? Would we approve a road for the public to drive through the Odinga scrub? I would suggest we wouldn't. The Conservation Council of South Australia provided a submission during the community engagement and strongly supported the closure to greatly enhance the conservation and connectivity of the Odinga wash pool. In order for staff to advocate on the direction this chamber sets, we need to identify our position on the western end of Button Road. This motion proposes we have the opportunity to do that, and in order to make an informed decision, we are provided with workshops on the ecology and hydrology of the location and the Ghana significance and perspectives of the area. We've had many discussions amongst each other and with local residents about the uniqueness of our region, the Odinga Wash Pool speaks to this and provides an opportunity for learning, enjoying and discovering. 
I hope you'll support this motion. Thank you. Um, do we have a seconder or do we have any questions? Uh, Councillor Bell. I'm happy to second the motion. Thank do you, you wish to speak? No. Uh, any questions? Any further debate? Do you wish to close debate, Councillor Bell? Councillor, Councillor Yeomans, did you, sorry? Do you wish to say something? Just a, just a, a quick, if I can. Yes, yeah, certainly, go ahead. Um, well, yeah, talk, just talk for the motion, if I can, just very briefly. Um, despite the consultation that's gone out, which has been very thorough, um, I think for council to form a position on Button Road, it's really, really important to have those um, uh, those elected member sessions as has been as proposed. Having um, listened and been part of some of those presentations in relation to the wash, they're extremely informative, and uh, I certainly support the fact that um, if we're going to at some point make a position on Button Road, that we certainly have um, have as much information to make that informed decision as best we can possibly can. So I certainly support this. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Greaves, a question or debate? Uh, debate, thank you. you um, look, I, I certainly appreciate um, the additions to the original motion that was just to note it. Um, I guess, I mean, I'm happy to support this. Um, I do also think that before we can make a, an informed decision, I certainly understand um, getting a clearer position on the value of not only the wash pool and the conservation zone, but clearly the value of Button Road to a lot of residents as well. Um, I think that's important that we are very, very clear um, on what the views are, and certainly a lot of that has come out in um, the consultation to date. But I think before we can actually make a position, a formal position, we also need to understand what the alternatives are and what the costings are and what their impacts are. So this is a much longer process. Um, and I certainly hope that, you know, should we have this come back to the Chamber for a formal position, um, that we have um, all of the information about what are the alternative access points, particularly for those residents who have made it very clear um, in the consultation to date um, that access through this particular road is really important to them um, and has been for the last 50 years. So um, happy happy to support this, but, you know, I'm, I need a lot more information um, about what the alternatives are and what council would do in the event that we do make a decision to close the western end. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? No further debate. I'll ask Councillor Judy to close. The only um, comment I guess I would make is that um, this chamber would have to make decisions based on social outcomes versus environmental and social. Um, and so the intention of this is to continue to build our capacity and understanding of the significance of the wash pool in order for us to, I guess, make um, an, an informed decision that um, builds our skills and knowledge around the environmental factors because it's very clear the social and individual perspectives that have come through the community plan. Um, I definitely don't have a strong enough understanding around the hydrology and ecology and um, Ghana perspectives to decision that is in the best interest of our community, not just now, but in the future. And I think um, we might have a little look at your microphone at some point. <laughs> I'll put the motion. Um, all those in favour? All those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. Um, item 9.3, uh, the Brazilian South Sector Agreement. And we are now up to page 63. Uh, Councillor Eaton. Yes, I certainly support uh, as written. Um, one thing that we should be doing, though, I noticed that under the transition towards low carbon region at page uh, 25 of the report, um, it talks about who we will work with. And I would have thought that they might have included the wrong the bottom of the RAA in it as well, because we are looking at um, the potential for uh, recharging stations for electric vehicles. That's something that needs to be taken into account. And I will be attending the signing soon. Thank I? you. And Councillor, I'm just confirming you are, are moving that motion. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Platten. Yeah, very happy to second it. Do um, you have to speak? Just very briefly, just to Sorry. say that. Um, more than happy to supply a nice pen if you need it for the same. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Any questions? Any further debate? Councillor Eaton, do you wish to close debate? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you.
We're now up to 9.4, the swim only area. And that starts on page 95. If you're looking at that, can't see yeomans. Yes, uh, not to move one, two, and three, but I did send some words uh -huh. through. Do you want to just um, jump in? It's how's the Amos? Can you just confirm what you can see on the screen is what you're proposing? Yeah, and talking to staff earlier. So it's yeah. one, two, and three, that's is that correct? correct? Yeah. So we'll get rid of the or. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's correct. correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, if I can, thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, the reason I'd like to move one, two, and three is to include the consideration for swim only section and the body of water between and around the Odinga Aquatic Reserve and the foreshore. Uh, number three relates to a, a non submitted by con uh, Councillor June 12 months ago on the 22nd of February 23. That motion included a request for the Mayor to write to the relevant Minister requesting consideration for a swim only section of the body of water between and around the Odinga Aquatic Reserve and the foreshore. This motion was carried and subsequently actioned. What I'd like to do now is to have your support to recommend this area to, to restrict motorised vessels and for Council to develop a consultation plan that engages both land and water-based stakeholders, as well as the local community, consistent with debt requirements, that is brought to a future, a future Council meeting for assessment uh, for endorsement. This area would, would, apply, would also apply within four, uh, 200 metres of the low water mark and include the sanctuary zone and the Dinga Aquatic Reserve. The city of could bring a prize to serve on families having the opportunity to enjoy our magnificent beaches. The exclusion within this area will provide people a safer place to swim, snorkel and relax. Council, including elected members, do receive feedback about safety concerns associated with personal watercraft, in particular jet skis, creating hazards for swimmers at Odinga and surrounding beaches. This is particularly relevant to swimmers snorkeling around the marine park at Snapper Point with motorised watercraft legally able to travel across the marine park. This has raised safety issues and poses a risk to the environment. Snapper Point is a sanctuary zone within the marine protected area that adjoins the beach at Odinga sanctuary zones with marine parks have been set aside to, to protect breeding grounds and nursery areas vital to marine life. Although recreational activities such as sailing, diving, kayaking, surfing, and swimming are welcome in the sanctuary zones, fishing in these reserves is not permitted. Jet skis are permitted to travel through a sanctuary zone but must not exceed 35 knots or 65 kilometres an hour. I wouldn't have thought a jet ski travelling across a sanctuary zone at any speed is a safe environment for swimmers and those snorkelling in the area, not to mention the effect this may have on breeding grounds, nurseries, and other areas vital to marine life. I acknowledge this report does not identify a high number of complaints received regarding the irresponsible use of motorised watercraft, but that does not necessarily mean this behaviour is not occurring, which is where public consultation is important on this issue and the reason the motion was submitted 12 months ago. I therefore ask you to support this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor June. I'd like to second it. Thank you. Do you wish to speak? Um, only that um, it continues to be an issue that um, is raised by both Councillor Yeom to Councillor Yeomans and I. So it's not like it's a historical, even though there's um, evidence and stats and data that was provided, presented in the report. Um, there's also anecdotal conversations that we've had that um, demonstrates this continues to be a problem in our local community. Thank you. Uh, um, Councillor Bill, a question or debate? Thank you. Just a question, if I okay. may, to, to the uh, staff. Um, I understand there, uh, there is definitely a, uh, an area that grew uh, um, on the coast um, that is designated for um, um, woodcraft. It's, it's um, like this, this, that's an issue here. I just wondered whether Council had considered this before and do we know if there's other designated areas across the coast? Um, through the mayor, look, I, I'm not aware of designated areas. I think the in practice, the way it works is in reverse. Um, 
motorised watercraft are permitted anywhere unless they're excluded. Um, and that exclusion, um, as we've said in the report, is the responsibility of the Department of Environment and Transport. Um, but the process that they have, have asked council to go through to introduce or request an exclusion is, is public consultation. Um, so I think you know, that's, that's the process that we've laid, laid out. Sorry, just, um... Seek further clar clarification. Um, it was jet skis specifically that apparently in Goolwa they have a designated area, and I just wondered whether you're aware of that. Uh, through the chair, I'm not really aware of the provisions of, of how that's come about or, or yeah, how that's okay. Yeah, Thank you. How that's introduced. Uh, any further questions? Debate, Councillor Young, would you like to close debate? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? Motion's carried. Thank you, everyone. Um, 9.5, the proposed road closure um, at Old Wollonga Hill. And um, I don't believe there's any updates from staff. That's correct. Yep. Um, so do I have Councillor Bell? Thank you. Yes, I'm happy uh, to move this motion. Um, I, I just want to ask to start with a couple of questions of staff. To Certainly. Clarify. Go ahead. Um, um, are the staff um, aware of um, issues raised by uh, the adjoining property? And what uh, updates can you provide there with um, uh, consultations and discussions, please? Through the Mayor. Um, yes, we are aware of and have been in discussion with um, number 35 Old Wollonga Hill Road. Um, there have been a number of FOIs, um, letters and emails that have gone back and forth um, over the past 12 months um, with that landowner. Um, during the um, consultation process, which will be the next step, he will be invited to, um, to either put in or submit an, um, an objection uh, and then he can come to council and actually speak to that objection as well. So. Thank you. For one further question, I think. Um, uh, is it, uh, can you uh, explain what work has been done to try and provide access for number 35? Yep. He has ongoing access. Uh, we have removed the trees um, that um, were planted by 113 Old Wollonga Hill Road. Um, there is also a guardrail but he does have access and will continue to have access um, even after the um, this road closure. Thank you. No further questions. Uh, I'll just briefly debate, if I may, just to say that I support the motion uh, and uh, thank the staff for the work that they've done. I know there's been uh, a lot of work that has gone, gone on with discussions for both parties involved, uh, both at 113 and 35. Uh, I did actually speak with uh, the gentleman who lives at number 35 uh, this morning again, uh, and um, it's clear to me that he uh, understands now the process is consultative and that he'll have an ability to um, raise issues or questions. Um, he also uh, three times did say to me that he was supportive of, of this this. Um, uh, uh, set this uh, arrangement or this request by the uh, uh, parties that live at 113. Um, so generally I support it uh, and uh, we'll just see what comes from it, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pritchard. I'm just happy to second the motion. Do you wish to speak? I uh, will say thank you to Councillor Bell for uh, doing so much work on this one with the landowners. Thank you. Any questions? Further debate, do you wish to close debate, Councillor Bell? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you, everyone. And um, yes, we look forward to uh, the ongoing steps in that and appreciate the staff's work and getting that to this point. And um, while we're on roads, we're up to 9.6 now, which is um, about the walkway, and we've still got our um, deputation in the room, which is terrific. And um, do Councillor Platten, off you go. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to move uh, recommendations one, two, three, four, five. And, okay, thank you very much. And do you wish, uh, with that edit? Oops. 
Let me go first. Yes. Yes, correct. Thank you. Um, and you wish to speak to the motion? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'd like to thank um, the two staff that came and did a presentation tonight. Um, my, from my observations, it makes sense. And uh, it makes sense from all parties. So I'm very happy to support it. And um, taking into account the public consultation, uh, I can't help but think some people that submitted uh, as part of that may have been a little bit confused about what was happening. Um, so I firmly support it. Uh, and I know that uh, Gretel can't be here tonight, but she was um, supportive as well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fisher, have you got a question? Okay. Do you wish to speak? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pritchard, question or debate? Uh, just a quick question. Just the existing footpaths around the block. Uh, do we have a, you know, Apologise for not getting these questions in earlier, but a, a commission report or um, uh, I guess any DDA access concerns. And what I'm thinking potentially is that some of the funds may be used potentially to upgrade any footpaths in the area that need it. So, would you be happy to take that as a question on notice? I certainly would. Okay, well, perhaps we'll just leave it at that as a question on notice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm uh, helping with the discipline of getting your questions in on time. Um, so thank you, Councillor Pritchard, for giving me the opportunity to do that. Do you wish to debate? Uh, only very quickly, I drove past the site tonight. I'm um, taking my youngest son to his soccer practice. Um, yeah, the site and the walkway from the northern side looks like it's part of the school already. So um, with the fencing, so I think it's a, it's a really good outcome for the school. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Greaves. Uh, question or debate? Oh, just a quick debate. Okay. Yeah, look, I too am happy to support this. I think um, from a community perspective, the only the only concern that I was really concerned about that came through the consultation was um, the inability for local residents to actually utilise it for um, access between the two roads. However, again, like Councillor Yeomans, um, had a look around the area, and I think that given the construction of the of the actual um, suburb, there are actually lots of access points. You know, the blocks, I think, as Rick was pointed out by the deputation, are not significantly large. There are plenty of roads and other laneways to actually traverse through. Um, so I think, you know, um, a detour of 50 metres one way or the other is, is not excessive. Um, and, you know, like Councillor Yeomans has mentioned, it, it looks like it's part of the school already in some respects. Um, and I think certainly for uh, for the expansion of the school, it is a real, real positive, um, positive element uh, to be added to it. So I'm um, happy to support this. Thank you. I'm quite happy that Councillor Yeomans is happy to have things attributed to him as well. <laughs> um, I'll sort you can talk to each other about that. Um, I'll put I will ask Councillor Platten if you'd like to close the uh, uh, with debate, close with a comment. Yes, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Pritchard as well. <laughs> uh, I will now put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? And the motion's carried. Thank you, everyone. Um, item 9.7, Art Centre. Um, this, uh, I don't believe there's any updates. Councillor Platten. Thank you. I would like to move as we. Thank you. Debate? Uh, just a, a really quick comment. Uh, I had a, a few conversations with uh, staff, namely uh, through the CEO today, about um, where to go with this. And uh, and I'd just like to make it clear that um, I'd like this to be brought up in the budgeting process as we move forward. Thank great. you. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Eaton. Yes, I'm certainly prepared to uh, support this. Um, we have to be very mindful of yes. the Escosa report and the impacts that that's going to have on our future budgets. Because if we're going to, you know, be able to do our business properly, it's important that we be mindful of the costs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, any further questions? Debate? Councillor Patton, do you wish to close? Uh, 
I'll put the motion, all those in favour, all those against, the motion is carried, thank you. 9.8, update on discussions with netball stakeholders. I don't believe there's an, uh, any further updates. Uh, Councillor Femiolotis. Can I start with the question first before oh, we go? Yes. Um, just one question. Pa page 182 talks about some sort of next steps, action items. Can um, you let me know if any of those have been actioned or completed? Since um, the agenda went out? Yes. Uh, is one of the officers able to help with that? Page 182. It's 182 of the agenda. Attachment two. Page four or five of the reports. Uh, through the mayor, uh, we um, we have not had any formal notification of exactly all of these, but uh, the first one definitely has been um, uh, undertaken. Uh, the second to last, with regard to concept planning, there are some dates that have been arranged with both uh, the Southern Stars Netball Club as well as SUNA um, to meet with our city oper operations people to start the uh, concept planning. And of course, we have done the council report. Um, with regard to the ones all in between, they are um, obviously in the domain and responsibility of SUNA and Southern Stars. So um, I know there has been um, uh, some consideration of that, but I haven't got any formal uh, notification of where that is at. Um, thank you, Mayor. I would like the Chamber to consider that I move a formal motion that this motion be deferred to the April Council meeting. Uh, do we have, do you wish to speak to that? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think I get to. I don't think you do, no. Yeah. So uh, do we have, when I need a seconder though, do we have a seconder? Councillor Eaton? First, I'll certainly second it. So the motion is to defer this item until April 2024. Um, all those in favour? All those against? The motion's carried. Item 9.9. .9. Uh, which is the Christie Creek Environmental Protection, 185, page 185. Don't believe there's any um, updates. Is that correct? Councillor Stafford. Um, I would like to move as written. Move as written. Thank you very much. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, just shortly, just to commend the staff on their, um, uh, their work on this. I think anyone that has uh, walked along Christie's Creek or looked, along, looked at the photos, uh, included in the agenda, can see that it's a pretty, uh, yeah, pretty ugly, ordinary place most of the time. So it's good that, um, you know, this is getting some motion in the area, looking at uh, state government assistance and looking at we, what we can do. So uh, I'm really excited to see how it progresses. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I Platten? Thank you so much. Just um, three to three at the moment. Um, I would like to debate a little bit if I can. Are you seconding the motion? Yep, I, like I do that. that. Please do that. No, you can. Would you like to debate now? Thank you. Yeah, just a few comments. I, uh, this gives us a really good starting point. So uh, from from my perspective, we've spent a long time uh, avoiding the topic or, or not focusing on Christie's Creek. Uh, and this gives us as an ability, people of the chamber, to go out and advocate for it. Um, know basically how much it's going to cost and and talk to our local MPs about uh, state and federal about why they should be supporting um, one of one of the major things in the city of Onkaparinga. So um, I thank staff for writing the report and putting as much effort in as they have. Uh, and, uh, and I really look forward to seeing what we can, some great outcomes that we can achieve. Thank you, Councillor. Any further questions? Uh, Councillor Bell. Uh, yes, just a brief question. I know in the report that the um, uh, council did receive funding from the federal government in 2022. Is that correct? Is that what it said? Yeah. Or was it earlier, 2020? Uh, through the chair. Um, it might have been earlier. So we received, a, um, I think it was 2013 to 2019, we received Probably funding not. through the Urban Creek Recovery Program. Um, I just note, because the uh, current federal government has had uh, is this a debate or have you got a question? No, no question. Okay. Uh, just because the um, current federal government has had a um, second or third, having a second or third round of funding, I note that um, there are a number of other um, councils, including Council of uh, City, uh, 
areas of the Ongaparinga Park, um, there's some actually extra work being done and funding provided. So I just wondered, um, it says here City of Marin has got some work um, that's planned, Sturt River City of Mitcham. Is, is, there, is, you, is there any involvement in, in further funding grant? Um, through the Mayor, um, I'm not entirely sure what funding grant that is. We are um, working on another stage of the Urban Creek Recovery Program, but that focuses more on the Happy Valley region up in the Field River. Okay. Um, our next steps for us are really to try and solidify a stormwater management plan for this catchment. And if that is endorsed by um, Council and due, that will open up funding opportunities through the Stormwater Management Authority. And this is through the uh, Urban River catchment. Is that the one? Yep. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Council Stafford, do you wish to close debate? All those in favour? All those against? The motion's carried. Thank you very much. Item 9.10. And uh, where are we? Do we have a mover? Council. Oh, sorry. Council. No, Council Stafford. Who's going? Council Stafford. Off you go. Um, also commend the staff on this report. Um, I think it very much makes clear that we're not really in the budgetary position uh, to pursue this service. But uh, I think it's good that we did the report to sort of see what we have open. But, yeah, thank you to the staff. Thank you. Uh, Council for me, I just second the motion. You get happy to second the motion? No debate? I'll treat this as no further debate from councillors Stafford either. All those in favour? All those against, the motion's carried. Thank you. 9.11, which is the Beach Road Streetscape Improvements, something that's close to the heart of a number of people in this room. Um, do, yes, Councillor Platten, would you like to move this motion? I would like to move the motion. Thank you very much. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, please. Off you go. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the staff for their very, very, very fast um, revision of where this node might be able to be placed. Um, I think given the, the options, um, this, is, this is a fantastic place for a node. Uh, it's going to support local businesses in that area and there certainly won't be any issues with residents um, close by or in the proximity of so I appreciate that um, been walking down the street last week and talking to a number of residents uh, I think um, I can say that the general consensus was very supportive of the idea and so um, I'm very happy to support it so thank you uh, Councillor Thimia Lotus just to second the motion thank you no. uh, Councillor Fisher no, I thought it was second. Do you wish to have no question? All right. Um, no further debate. And this Councillor Pat would like to close the debate. Yes, uh, I can't uh, stop debate without saying um, that my fellow ward councillor Greta Wilkes. Uh, I've had many conversations over the last couple of days with her, and she wanted to uh, for me to commit her support to it as well. So thank, thank you. you. Well, uh, you can't get two votes, but I will now put the motion. All those in favour. All those against, the motion's carried, and you might like to pass that on to her on our behalf. At 9.12, the changes to the smoking and vaping legislation. Councillor Themilotis. Can I move the motion with one additional dot point? Off you go. And that dot, dot point is, uh, and now you might be able to help me, but what um, the dot point is that um, Council put an update on its social media page outlining the changes. Okay. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Um, yeah, I will speak to it really briefly. Um, first of all, I think um, it's really important to mention the work of Councillor Bell, who has raised this issue um, in council on many occasions. And I feel like was actually ahead of the game with government on this as well, raising this as um, an issue coming from a very strong um, health perspective. And for me, it was coming from that environment perspective and things that I was seeing in my community. Um, I guess I'm a little bit disappointed that the changes have come through and the state government haven't offered each council maybe $20,000 to cover the cost of signage and the cost of all these things that, that we need to do. Um, the additional point is really, it's not about um, our clubs and our groups because they have received um, communication from council staff. They've printed off signage, they've updated those changes. But it's about the patrons and the visitors and the local residents that go to these facilities 
who may use vapes and they may not be aware of the changes or may not be aware that council is really pushing those changes. So the social media bit is about a bit about education and a little bit about spreading it a bit wider in our community of the changes. You would think they should be aware with the amount of media that's been out there, but I just want to re-emphasize that um, so it's out there in our community and it's just not just our clubs, but the people visiting our facilities knowing that the changes have occurred and they need to adhere to them. Thank you. Councillor Eaton. Yeah, certainly I'm supportive of it. It's about getting that information out there and informing people and having recently experienced the situation on the other side of the line where um, somebody asked somebody on the, at the railway station to stop vaping with her and her three children, and then a threatening event occurred on the train that I actually had to remove a number of passengers into another part of the train. So it's important that this information's out there and it's certainly well informed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'm assuming you seconding that. Yes, thank you. Councillor Bell. Thank you, Laura, um, and thank you, um, um, Councillor Familiotis, for the words and uh, for everyone's support thus far. Uh, I just want to um, acknowledge the work that the Council have done so far on, on some short, short notice, but I also want to acknowledge uh, a lot of the work that they did in answering some questions that go back um, to early last year, April, May, whatever it was, and highlighting um, the scourge of the problem um, uh, close to our schools that impacts on on our children and uh, the risks that it poses to them uh, to becoming uh, essentially uh, addicted to um, much worse um, or continuing to be addicted to um, a lot of um, uh, dangerous, poisonous, um, vaping, um, aerosols or cigarettes. Um, it's uh, acknowledged that, as Councillor Camilleros has said, that um, some of our community centres have already started to do some of the work. Certainly, I've already discussed this with a, a couple, and I know that they've been able to, um, some centres have printed out what's required. Uh, this is a really important issue to me, you're right. Um, I see on a daily basis when I go to work the impacts that uh, smoking and vaping has on our community, in particular young children. Um, I, I don't necessarily need to repeat, but I just want you all to hear it. Uh, but of course, um, it does increase the risk of lung, lung injuries, it increases the risk of seizures, it increases the risk of asthma attacks, bronchitis and rare cases of death. A single disposable e-cigarette product, a vape, can contain as much nicotine as 50 traditional cigarettes at a cost of as little as $5. This is alarming when we know that nicotine is highly addictive and can impede brain development, particularly of our young, young uh, children. In addition, the damage vaping can do, can do can be physical. It can also impact on mental health. Um, growing international research showing that vaping increases the risks of mood and anxiety and disorders and can worsen the symptoms of depression. Some of the chemicals that are found in vapes are acrylate, found in a weed killer, uh, acetylenitride, uh, found in car exhaust fumes, arsenic, found in rat poison, cadmium, found in batteries, formaldehyde, found in preservatives in mortuaries, benzene, found in gasoline, chlorine, found in bleach, bleach and glyoxyl, found in hospital-grade disinfectants. This motion and the work that we're doing in consultation with the government is in line with our community plan, our regional public health plan, in improving healthy lifestyles, prevention of chronic disease, uh, under the theme of people, communities are active and healthy. Whether you vape or smoke, um, or are a passive smoker and, um, uh, and receiving and inhaling the vape, you are at risk of cancer developing in the mouth, the nose, the throat, the voice box, the esophagus, the blood cells, the liver, the stomach, the kidneys, the pancreas, and over the uterus, the cervix, colon, and bladder. You have worsening chronic respiratory and heart disease, worsening conditions of diabetes, infections, uh, dental problems, and gum disease. Um, as well as that, of course, we have often the unseen, but sometimes seen by, uh, in some circumstances, the financial cost to both personal and that felt by families and loved ones in the broader community, and the increasing cost um, to those individuals, but also the increase in costs and burden to our health system in crisis. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pritchard. Um, I just wanted to just quickly acknowledge the how fantastic it is that we've got our own signage shop that can do, I think it was 466 signs for less than $20,000. Um, I think that's extraordinary. And if we were looking at a third party, we'd be paying a lot more. So I think it's fantastic that we've got the signing shop that can do this for us. Thank you. Um, Council Premier Lotus, do you wish to close? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? The motion's carried. Uh, next, we have um, the motions that are going, proposed to be going to the Australian Local Government Association's National Assembly later in the year, and there are four motions there, and Councillor Bell. Yes, I'd like to move the motion. Thank you. Do you wish to speak? Um, just to say that uh, I think this is in line with, with what um, Council has been um, advocating for for a long time, um, uh, and is very much in line with uh, a lot of the work that we've done as a chamber in the last 18 months or more. Um, I think it's um, uh, very exciting uh, and uh, uh, I look forward to hearing the outcomes. Thank you. Councillor Fisher, a question or second? No, I'd like to second the motion uh, with my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Debate? Councillor Bell, are you happy to close? Okay, all those in favour? Against? Motion's carried. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to casting our vote at that event on your behalf. Um, we now have the elected member application to attend that conference. And I think you would have a declaration. Uh, we go. I do, thank you, Mayor. I, I have a declaration of um, um, a conflict of material interest. Uh, I'm the subject of the motion and requesting, uh, that's a, requesting approval to attend. Uh, so I intend to leave the meeting. Thank you. I'll let you leave. Yeah. That's the Fisher. Mayor, I'll move the motion. Thank you very much. Do you wish to speak to it? No, absolutely. Okay. That's the Pritchard. I'm happy to second the motion. Thank you. That's, uh, do you wish to speak? Yes, please. Go ahead. Um, as we all know, Councillor Bell is a very passionate advocate for uh, the Yonga Premier Council, uh, for the Southern Wales area. She's a very passionate advocate for health and wellbeing. She's a very pa pa passionate advocate for the Indigenous community. Uh, and she's also very passionate with regards to the democratic process and the local government association and the changes that are occurring at the moment, uh, especially with regards to the, the federal environment and local government. Um, this opportunity has been presented to all the elected members uh, and Councillor Bell was nominated. Um, and she hopes that she will be able to extend her relationships uh, and allow her to improve her role uh, as an elected member by attending this conference. Um, personally, I don't support the motion. Um, I think we're not quite at the right stage in our repair process um, for this in the community, uh, to support funding of this in the community. But um, I fully support uh, Maurice's nomination and her um, support her putting her hand up because I think we all had the opportunity to do so. Um, and I think it was great that she, she has put her hand up. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Eaton. Yes, I'm certainly not in support of this. I see at a time when we've got to make some budget savings, it's important that we don't spend money on this sort of thing. Um, we've got the mayor going, we've got the CEO going. And what really does concern me about this is that it's going to form part of a private visit for the councillor as well. And the criticism that was even at, uh, at the um, Independent Commission Against Corruption with its officers spending a week or something overseas doing private stuff as well. So, look, it's very important that uh, we make the budget savings. 
but we demonstrate to the community that we are prepared to uh, not waste the money on certain things. We've got two people going. We did uh, refuse the mayor attending uh, an event last year. We've got two senior people going. And I would encourage members of this chamber to actually get along to the local government association meetings. Avoid the first day that costs us money. We go along the second day because that's when you actually hear what's going on at the meeting and it gives you a chance to um, interact with your co-councillors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Patton, question or debate? No, just a quick debate, if I can. Yeah. Um, I'd like to echo uh, Councillor Pritchard's uh, sentiments. I, I completely understand why um, Marisa wants to go and uh, and I think that she is a strong advocate for the city of Onkaparinga. And I think that she would spend four days talking to a lot of people. Um, but we are looking at some quite um, harrowing decisions over the next couple of months. And uh, for, for those reasons, and setting an example to our community, I think we do have to be ever so careful about about what we fund. Um, so I won't be supportive, but I'm incredibly supportive of uh, Marisa and and what she stands for. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ju. Question or debate? Um, debate. Thank you. Off you go. Um, I absolutely understand the tension. I guess um, what comes to my mind is that this is within budget, the current set budget at the moment. It's not in addition to anything that's not um, being accounted for, although it's not, not currently assigned. Um, and the other point that I was just thinking about then is we are the largest council in South Australia. Um, and so with that, um, I'm surprised about the lack of visibility that we do have at a national level when it comes to conferences at times. And I do think that um, it's hard to measure the return on these opportunities. But um, through the opportunity to collaborate, to bring the horizon and to see what other councils are doing, the ability to bring that back to our city um, does pay probably um, great advantage, not just now, but into our future. So um, I understand the tension, but um, I am leaning more towards voting in favour and I suggest you think similar. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fisher, did you wish to have a question? Yeah, I've got a, um, a point of order in respect to the secondment or the seconder, uh, Councillor Pritchard, uh, and some of the comments that... Uh, I don't think it meets that criteria. Um, you can second a motion. Yeah. The motion, the motion was for the, the attendance is what I'm saying. And so... Can I just check that then? So you yeah. with it? Okay. So I just... The whole box and dice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now, I think it, I think it, I think my ruling stands, which is that it's um, not a point of order. Uh, however, if this apart counts agrees, you might want to say something. Mm -hmm. oh, I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good to work. <laughs> Let me get the names right this time. Uh, like Councillor Jew, I can certainly appreciate the, the tension between, I guess, where we are currently sitting with our budget discussions um, and what I consider business as usual. Now, training um, and professional development are business as usual. Um, and particularly for a, a new chamber, I think that the value of being in a position to be able to attend conferences and training sessions is invaluable. Um, I guess I've had the benefit of a, a lot of years in the chamber and the opportunity to, to attend a national conference um, a couple of times. Um, and look, you know, while whilst I think many, many around the chamber um, would acknowledge that it is valuable. I think it's the actual being there and actually participating, um, networking, uh, and basically learning uh, about local government um, across the country is critically important. There are lots of things that we are contemplating as a chamber which have which are have have national significance, um, and I think that um, the agenda that I've seen for the um, for the conference schedule um, touches on a lot of the things that we're also contemplating. Um, it is within budget. We do set 
an elected member training budget every year, and this is within budget. Um, I think, you know, we've all been given the opportunity to attend these should we wish to. Not everybody can. Um, and, look, I think it is important that, you know, we don't stop training and stop attending conferences. Um, it forms a significant and important part of our role um, as an elected member body. So um, I appreciate the tension, uh, but I do think it is important that we allow each elected member to determine um, what they feel is going to um, assist them in fulfilling their role to their full potential. And so I will be supporting it. Thank you, Councillor. Um, no further questions. Uh, Councillor Fisher, would you like to close debate? So um, I support uh, the recommendation in its entirety. That means we approve her attendance and the associated cost, which is in the first line. Um, and that's based on the fact that uh, a knowledge that it's within budget, okay? And I don't think we should be able to stand in the way of professional development, um, something that's been offered to everyone, uh, and as I said, within budget, and uh, I urge uh, the Chamber to vote in support of this motion. Thank you. Thank you. No further questions, no further debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? One, two, three. All those against? The motion is defeated. Thank you. If someone can let call of a division. Thank you, Councillor Greaves. Will all those for the motion, would they please stand? Councillor Fisher, Councillor Jew, Councillor Greaves. All those against, could they please stand? Councillor Yeomans, Stafford, Platton, Eaton, Pritchard, and Thermia Lotus. Thank you. There's no just hold on two seconds. I'm just, I just need to check, uh, is this relevant to um, the elected member who's excluded themselves from the room? I just, because she's coming back and I just want to check that that's... Thank you. Yep, I uphold that. Yeah, I agree. And um, I will um, have on the record too that um, I'll follow that through after the meeting. Um, it's I do will use this opportunity, so thank you, Councillor Thimula, just to remind all elected members that uh, it is a matter of we are dealing with motions, not with people. We're making corporate decisions on behalf of a body, not on behalf of individuals and those and the, of our own whole community and not on individual boards either. So yeah. when we come to a decision, we need to bring all of those factors into our decision-making processes. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 9.15, the electorate representation review. And uh, I'll remind... You, as you read this, this is a uh, compliance uh, requirement in accordance with the Local Government Act. Councillor Eaton. Yes, I'm certainly supportive of... Uh, so, can you just give me clear, uh, you are um, the motion. Thank yes. you very much. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, it's a, a legislative requirement, and it also ensures that we can look at the boundaries of the wards. Uh, no, I don't think that's correct. Uh, I'll just... Uh, it's a representation review, not a boundary review, is that correct? Yeah. Of the awards, not a boundaries of the council. And it also perhaps provides us an opportunity to make some significant savings and uh, and look at our representation. And we might even want to reduce to five awards. I look forward to hearing that debate in the chamber. Do I have a seconder for that motion? This motion, reminding us that it is a compliance requirement. Happy to second. Thank you very much, Councillor Lotus. Any questions? Uh, all those in favour? Again, the motion is carried. Thank you very much. We now move into all the questions on notice, of which there are... Oh, 916. Oh, sorry, 916. Apologies. The Council and Committee reporting schedule, one of our highest, most exciting items. Uh, Councillor Premier Lodin. Let's just move as written. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, Councillor Eaton? No, I'll second. Thank you. Any debate? No. All those in favour? 
carried. Thank you. Um, so now we move on to the questions on notice. Apologies for uh, rushing ahead with that one. Um, we have um, all of those, I believe, are now appear in our um, documentation and, and on in the agenda and in the minutes. I just was wanted to um, make a comment on 1010 around debt, that that was the total debt. It wasn't just the operating debt, so that people have a clarity of what you're actually uh, what had actually been requested. Uh, so I just wanted to pass that on. Thank you very much. And now we can move on to the questions on notice. And we have Councillor Fisher, I believe. He presses his button. Thank you very much. Oops, Councillor Fisher. Sorry, Councillor Platton. Councillor Fisher. Um, now, can you see what the amendment is that you've got in front of you? Is that yeah. what you so intend to move? That is the, uh, the amended uh, issue. Yes, in relation to the uh, the budget, obviously the potential cost to the uh, organisation, uh, the council, um, and members, elected members, in the background of most council meetings uh, that uh, we have been exposed to in this particular term, uh, trees feature, whether it's uh, the culling of them or the planting of them or the removal of them because of a causing a hazard and everything else. Um, trees are an important part uh, of our ecosystem and certainly uh, as most of the chamber would attest it's also the basis for a lot of things if we talk about climate change uh, we talk about uh, the canopy the shade that that provides we talk about wildlife um, I, I remind council and members or elected members in relation to uh, the issues that we've had with the community over the destruction of trees, the removal of trees, uh, the disturbance of koalas from um, non-native uh, vegetation in the area. Um, and what this motion does in its in entirety picks up a, a number of uh, standards, which is in the papers there for you to have a look at. But the the city of Ankapinga should look at, and this is what I'm suggesting the feasibility of, as a tree city of the world. Uh, through the program funded by the Arbor Day Foundation in the United States. Uh, of the nine tree cities in, in Australia, four from South Australia, only Burnside, Charleston and Mitcham. And as a city, we have the opportunity to join this uh, group and uh, promoting the importance of trees. To achieve uh, that recognition as a tree city, we must meet five core standards outlined by the program. We need to establish responsibility. We need to have a written statement by city leaders delegating responsibility for the care of our trees within council boundaries to a staff member of a department or a group of citizens. So that's the removal of them, that's the cultivation of them, that is everything to do with trees. We need to set the rules. We need to have a place or a law or an official policy that governs the management of forests and trees. These rules describe how much work must be performed. We need to have, we need to know what we've got, an audit. And uh, I certainly, and I know a few others also, have, uh, have advocated for this uh, during this particular term. What are our significant trees? Where are they? What is the canopy? We've got, we've got excellent data uh, that covers uh, the the whole city, and we know where our hot spots, so to speak, are. Uh, that's where the trees need to be planted. We've had discussions in the past where, um, you know, we've we've got rid of some trees at, at a location and considered planting them miles away, certainly within the city, but the benefits of the local area are not realised with the replanting. We need to allocate resources. We need a dedicated annual budget. The implementation of the tree management plan. And we need to celebrate achievements. Um, my understanding is we have two of the five criteria, specifically standards and five, however, we have a potential to meet standards one, two, and three, the first three, first three things I mentioned. By fulfilling the above criteria and having the application approved, we can probably become a tree city of the world, joining a global network for the preservation and enhancement of our urban forests. Members, that is the motion. It's with benefit and, and hindsight in res respect to budget considerations, but it's still about trees. 
So I ask you to, to vote in the affirmative for this particular motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Platton. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to second the motion. And um, speak to the motion? Yeah, absolutely. Off you go. Um, so I thank Councillor Fisher for bringing this to the attention of the Chamber. Um, I, I think the main part of this is know what you have. And uh, I was speaking to a fellow councillor on Saturday about a very, very, very large tree that had been felled uh, in McLaren Flat. And I think if we knew what we had and if we'd, if we'd had it and notified the public about how amazing this tree was, then there's probably a potential that it wouldn't have been felled. And I think the cost in this will be the data collection. And I think a feasibility um, report back to the chamber is uh, incredibly important so that we know what we're up for. Uh, but my hope is that we already have some of the data and that uh, we can work towards becoming a tree city of the world. I think it would be uh, a great asset to us. And I think we're doing a lot of work around trees um, and we should be recognised for that. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bell. A question or debate? Uh, thanks, Mayor. Just a, um, a short debate, if I may. I support the motion. Uh, I believe that if uh, we need to do everything we can to try and improve our tree canopy, um, and this is one way that we can highlight the importance of, of maintaining and preserving uh, every tree that we can in our city, um, uh, I I was one of the people that um, I think I had a discussion with someone uh, with Councillor Platton, but many others in the last few weeks, uh, those who live in the Clown Flat where that particular tree that you mentioned was felled, uh, and we got a call myself and Councillor Pritchard concerned about that particular tree. It was a very large tree, and I can't tell you how many metres high or how wide it was, but it was very large. Sadly, there are continue to be gaps in what we can do to try and preserve and protect our trees in our city. Um, there's still a large number of, of uh, property and, how, and trees that are on private property, and there's still a lot of work we and other environment groups um, uh, need to do to help protect and in, increase our uh, tree canopy. Um, trees provide us an incredible amount of oxygen for every living being on the planet to breathe. It provides shade, it stores carbon, it cleans the air we breathe, breathe and it provides a home for our native animals. Um, so I support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. No further questions or debate. Um, I'll ask Councillor Fisher if you'd like to close debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? All those against, the motion's carried. Thank you very much. We now move into petitions, receiving the petitions 12.1. Uh, the first petition is save the trough. Um, do we have a mover? Councillor Thermia Lotus. Oh, just a mover's written. Thank you. As seconder. Thank you, Councillor Eaton. No debate. No. All those in favour? Against, motion's carried. The second one we have is 12.2, and I think there were some additional pieces of information about that. And Councillor Eaton, you have a proposition? Yeah, I've got a, uh, an alternative to it. Um, primarily. I just want to just check that um, that's what people can see on the screen is what that's, you've requested. That's correct, yes. Okay, off you go. Yep. About 100 metres down from this property, uh, this reserve, there's a playground. The playground is amongst big gum trees that have big limbs and the potential for limbs to fall on people. The reserve, unfortunately, doesn't meet the criteria for irrigation unless it has some form of infrastructure on it, such as the playground. So what I'm actually asking here is that uh, there's an opportunity to move that playground to this particular reserve, therefore it meets the criteria and therefore it could be irrigated. Because the consequences of this is but if we just go ahead and do this one, we're going to have to do it for a lot of other reserves as well. People are quite passionate about these sorts of things. So if it's all good for one, it's all right for another, certainly in this area, probably another five or six that I'm aware of, and there's significant costs. So what I want to try to do is find out um, 
what the cost might be to move the playground. And then with the land that's vacated as a consequence of that, we never know, there might be an opportunity if we could actually sell that land as housing and uh, get uh, around about $1.4, $1.5 million for it to reduce our deficit. Thank you. Thank you. Just before we go to a second, I just want to ask the officer if that timeline is um, appropriate or can we align it with the open space? Yeah. Uh, through the Mayor, um, I think with the addition uh, to that resolution, it would be good to be able to push it out to about August and uh, we can then align it with the open space management plan is review. That, is that okay with you as the mover? So we'll move that to our August 2024. Thank you. Um, do I have a seconder? Councillor Thamia Lotus? Yeah, okay, I'll second. Um, I just want to ask a quick question. Off you go. Um, so you don't have to second it, you can ask a question. <laughs> um, just, I just want to talk to the, the first part of point two, which is around further investigations. What would further investigations entail, not talking about the playground? Just in general. What, the, what would, what would, what's the criteria for an yeah, investigation? Yeah, that's right. But not speaking to the playground, because that's an in addition. Uh, through the Mayor, um, investigations for this would entail um, relocation costs, um, moving of the equipment. Forgetting looking... the playground. Sorry? Forget forgetting the playground. The, yeah, forgetting the playground. What would you normally, what would an investigation? Uh, uh, through the Mayor, so we'll be looking at changing the classification for the reserves, looking at the service levels against the piece of open space and reviewing whether or not that meets the strategic alignment of the plan. Yeah, perfect. Um, look, and just one other quick question, just confirming that any costs or this information is definitely, it will obviously come back to us in that August council meeting. All right, um, elected members, I'll, I'll debate really briefly. Are you going to second? Oh, look, I'll second. Thank you. Um, with a sigh. Um, yeah, and a debate. And, and a debate. So you're trying and to a, bit of, a bit of debate. Um, look, elected members, look, I'll support this motion going forward only because I know, um, look, we're not approving anything. We're not approving any costs that's going to come back to us and we'll get that outlined to us. But I guess the idea of moving a playground so then the place can get irrigated, then that would probably mean that every resident would be like, I could move a playground and get irrigated. So, you know, it works both ways with, you know, manipulating things to make things work. Um, so elected members, this isn't approving anything. This isn't spending any money by the cost to bring this report back to us. Um, but everything will come back to us and that's when we'll get to make the final decision. So if you agree with getting this information back, um, then we'll be able to make the final decision then. Thank you. Councillor Bell, question or debate? Uh, just a question. Uh, I just wondered what work has been done with the community in that area uh, over all these years since the uh, um, sprinklers have been not functioning or turned off, whichever it was exactly. Um, in terms of Looking after the park themselves might be a hard ask, but I just wondered whether there was any work that they they had specifically personally done. Uh, through the mayor, my understanding is it's a local family reserve. So if anything other than our normal maintenance has been done on there by the residents, it's been done at, at their wish or at their desire. Um, with respect to its classification, and the turning off of the sprinkler system, that would have been done prior to the open space management plan coming into being. And that's where it's now got its classification. Um, I doubt that classification will change going forward unless there is some intervention by council. Uh, Councillor Yeomans. Just a question if I can, in relation to the investigation and the, and the report, would there be any commentary following on from what um, Councillor Eaton was talking about with the relocation of the playground and then that leaves potentially that vacant parcel of land. Would there be any commentary in the report in relation to where that uh, might end up? Uh, through the Mayor, yes. Um, at, leading up to that in April, we've got the Open Space Management Plan workshop and then we'll have um, further reports coming to Council leading up to that as well, which will probably identify uh, quite clearly what the future of the land parcels around there will be for. Uh, Councillor Ju. Um, I just wondered if there, so I've got a question. I wondered, um, is there a reserve close by that meets the needs of residents through this petition in close proximity? And you can take it on notice if you need. Take that on notice. Um, yes, we'll have to take that on notice. 
Thank you. Um, no further questions, no further debate. Um, Councillor Eaton, would you like to close? Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Uh, we now come to um, urgent business. Councillor G. Can you tell me what the urgent business is so we can decide whether we're going to accept it? Yeah, sure. So it's um, in relation to quarry dust um, that has been raised um, in with us. Um, so my rationale, do you want me to go into my rationale? I need to know whether it, why it's urgent. Yeah, sure. So um, there's been an ongoing concern that's increased and escalated recently. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Yeomans and I have often received correspondence and I note that um, in the last two weeks that your office also has, along with us being seated into it, um, about the health and wellbeing issues from dust from the Southern Quarry at Selix. Photos have been included in emails which clearly show dust in and around residential properties. This is a pressing health and wellbeing matter. The latest correspondence is said yes. We're going to debate. We know what, you, what your reason is now. Okay, that's the crux of it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy to accept that as urgent business. I know that people's health is urgent. We don't always know when these things become urgent. So go ahead and if you'd like to, um, is this the motion that you've put up? Is that accurate? Yeah, so I sent it to... Um, I sent it to elected members before, just highlighting that I um, was hoping to get uh, put this up. So we're going to treat this as debate now. Would you, or do you want to just? Um, I just want to highlight one thing. Um, okay. That um, it's about requests. So now the point one is about requesting the reinstatement of the EPA to do their own dust monitoring. Um, prior to this, they had done it, and then they allowed the. I could add that in my debate. Okay, I forgot. We'll, we'll, like we'll that. start the clock. All right, so the Southern Quarry is an open-cut mine operating from Selix Hill. Residents have been raising concerns about the impact of small dust particles from the mine blanketing homes and surrounding areas, impacting many residents' health and well-being for a considerable amount of time. This appears to have escalated in recent times. Um, throughout our term, councillor Gomez and I have been contacted by residents regarding dust from the quarry affecting homes. The community have suggested this has been, um, this has most recently escalated, which has resulted in the mayor, myself, and councillor Gomez receiving multiple emails from residents raising concerns about the health and well-being of local residents being impacted due to small particles of quarry dust. On the 8th of March, a post on the local community forum received over 200 comments much of them sharing concerns of the increasing dust visible in and around homes at Selix Beach. Some of the comments include, I agree, we are changing horse trough water twice daily and horses on respiratory powder as well has never ever been like this before. Another resident said, my concerns are the amount of dust that we're all breathing in. As a senior person with a disability, I need fresh air and there, isn't none. there is none. The amount of dust that is constantly in my home is hard to cope with. Yesterday I heard the blasting go off and several times it was before lunchtime. Is there anything that can be done before I end up in hospital? And finally, another resident, I've been here 20 years and definitely noticed it is worse now. I never had sinus and allergy issues before I moved here. On really windy days, I can feel my airways not liking it at all. As council do not have a remit to monitor or enforce any requirements to Southern Quarry, residents are referred to the Environment Protection Authority. The EPA has oversight to ensure the quarry is meeting regulations. Um, historically, the EPA actually had their own monitoring system to test dust. Um, and then in recent years, it was then referred to Southern Quarry to do their own monitoring. And so what this um, amend, like tweak I've just made, but I've presented to you, um, includes is us requesting, the City of Onkapranga through the Mayor requesting the reinstatement of the EPA actually monitoring the dust levels. Residents have raised frustration that they feel helpless as individually they don't feel this matter is taken serious. This motion sets out a role for council for the mayor to write a letter to the EPA highlighting residents' ongoing and escalating concerns, as well as a request for the EPA to reinstate dust monitors. 
Also, what should be noted is that um, the additional housing that is being released in time in Stelix is actually closer to the quarry than the current residents um, where predominant um, population is. And so we um, ask that the Planning Commission also receive a letter um, in order for them to consider this matter and the land developing um, being released and occurring at Stelix into the future. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Fisher. Question or debate? Uh, no, I'd like to second the motion and I'll have a question. Does, does anyone know what they're quarrying there? Sand. Just sand? <laughs> I'll just check. <laughs> there was, it looks like sand at my house. Yes, it's good. Through the matter, it's sand and blue metal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I support the motion. Uh, obviously, uh, the EPA has got a job there. I'm reliably informed that something has changed in recent times, which has brought it to the attention of the local members. Uh, We've spoken about it tonight very passionately and uh, I support it. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, any further questions or debate? Councillor Drew, do you wish to close? No, thank you. Uh, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against. The motion is carried. I do like to write to these people, so thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, we are now moving into confidence. Uh, just before we do that, though, I just want to, um, I'm noticing, noticing the time. We don't have a lot more left on our agenda, and I'm wondering if I could have a motion for us just to continue to extend. Uh, I, I think that I'll just treat that as unanimous support. Councillor Eaton moved it. Councillor Femulo to second it. All those in favour? Okay, so we'll keep moving. We'll now um, do the confidential clause, which is that uh, excluding the public and uh, Councillor Femiolotis. Yes, to move. Thank you very much. Councillor Eaton, second. Oh, thank you, yes. um, all those in favour? Okay. Motion's carried. Um, thank you very much. And I'll just check yeah. that everyone, we can stop.